All right, let's make a video showing you how to take advantage of this template. I imagine the first thing people are gonna to wanna to do is change out the default characters to something more interesting for their own games and their own prototyping. Um, I made these characters to the scale of the Mixamo Y-Bot because I figured that was a pretty common uh, prototyping character. Um, and so all the animations are based around that and those sort of portions. So hopefully anything you normally do in Mixamo would also work well here. Um, I did try to make these characters pretty useful though as well. They are pretty low poly uh, and I did set up the UVs in a way that you can go ahead and tinker pretty quickly if you need a prototype like, okay, I don't, I don't need to make an entire character, I just, need to, I just want them to be black or I, I want to make an orc character uh, or I want to do like a, like a dark elf or something, a blue-hued skin person. Um, so the UVs are kind of handy that way, they're, they're pretty flexible. Um, including even things like the eyes. Like the eyes I are just normal spheres. Uh, here, let me click off. The eyes here are normal spheres with just a gradient texture. And so you can just change out these, uh, you know, these blues here. I'll just change all of them here and uh, make it like red or something. Just like that, we've got ourselves, you know, some, some different irises. Here, I could probably be better if I added one more and more vibrant, there we go. So you can see, just by aligning the UVs, uh, these these characters that come default um, have some flexibility to them. You could you could pretty quickly. I know this is looking like a mermaid already. <laughs> anyway, so these characters are pretty useful, but uh, I understand obviously you want to bring in your own characters. Um, and since this is the normal standard like Y bot size, I want to bring in as an example a character who's totally different scale. This is my little skunk character. They are half the size of a human, and so we're going to bring them in and see how it goes. Um, the prerequisites to passing all this information over to another model is you need to have a game dev skeleton. That's a hierarchical skeleton where the bones are parented to each other properly in a proper order. I have other videos about that. Feel free to watch all that. Um, some easy options though, just to review it. Mixamo gives you a good game dev skeleton and it gives you the animation player because usually it has an animation or a T-pose already attached. Um, or you can use Rigify, but you'll want to use some plugins. I did write a plugin called Rig Godotify, which will give it a, a Godot skeleton, Godot rig. Um, but you'll still need to give at least one animation uh, to your rig in order for it to have an animation player in Godot. Um, so what that would look like is if you did do it manually or did do it through a plugin, um, you'll want to go into pose mode, go into the animation player. Uh, I'm going to swap this over to the nonlinear editor. Um, I'm going to select my entire rig and insert a keyframe for location, rotation, scale, and push that down. I'll rename this uh, T-Pose. So now at the very least, there's a T-Pose animation, which means when I bring it into Godot, it'll have uh, at least an animation player with one animation in it. I'm gonna quickly export this out. My export setting preferences are to include just the visible object, so it doesn't bring any other weird stuff. Um, I like to, I'll have it bring in the materials. I usually do placeholder there. Um, armature, I'll have it export only to deformation bones, so it only brings the, the, the deforming bones and none of the control bones that you see in the rig. Um, and that should do it. I'll overwrite that old skunk file from earlier. And that should do it. We should have this character ready to go. But again, I could have also just brought it into, into Rigify, brought in that character, brought him back out again. That also would have worked. All right, let's, uh, let's bring them in. I'm going to delete my old skunk in focus. This is from some tests from before. Let's uh, bring in my skunk. Wait for that to import. All right, so let's bring in the skunk. Now, it's got a standard skeleton, but we still have to make it compatible here in Godot. So I'm gonna double click that character to re-import them. They look good. I'll go to their skeleton and let's make a new bone map, a humanoid profile. And we can see that already it detected properly all the, the hands and bones. For most Mixamo and, and, and standard skeletons, it'll detect it just fine. Um, and you can see my animation player came in with that T-pose I added. So perfect, that'll make things really easy. Let's import that. Um, I'm gonna replace my main character, Mini, here with, uh, with that skunk. So I don't need anything from her. I don't need her animation player or any of her meshes. So I'm just gonna delete her entirely and then drag and drop in my skunk. Since I want to access, you can see he's half height, so this will be very interesting. Um, since I want to access his skeleton, I'll, I'll right click and make him local. I'll click on the uh, animation player here, and I want to give the animation player all those animations that Mini had, which came from an animation file. So I'll go to the animation section here, manage animations, 
load library, and under player, animation libraries is that melee library. Um, out of habit, <laughs> maybe tradition, I like to make this unique. Um, I did have some bugs in the past where shared animation libraries made shared characters running the same animations at the same time. All right, so now this guy, in theory, has all these animations. Let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Looking so cute, walking with something heavy. All right. But none of the gear is holding on to his skeleton. Um, it's because all that gear is attached through weapon systems and gadget systems. So we got to we gotta get all this talking. Um, this is currently just the animation player. I need to get the, also the animation tree incorporated. So I'm going to click the animation tree and assign it that new animation player. Cool, cool, cool. That resolves that error below. Um, so now the animation tree, all this logic, is ready to talk to that bone and animation set. Now I just need to give the gear to this new skeleton. So I'm going to go to my weapon system. And the weapon system you can see is just a couple of bone attachments, a right hand bone and a backbone. Um, but they are still holding on to the references to the previous model. So I'm going to click on my right hand, tell it my new skeleton is right here, and then uh, reset my right hand by clicking off it, clicking on it again. And you can see just like that, my character now is trying to hold that sword. It doesn't line up with the scale, so I'm going to expand my right hand here, click on this pivot that I've added specifically for this purpose, and realign that sword so that it fits in his hand and looks pretty good. How's that? That's not bad. All right, so cool. Now he's got his sword equipped. Uh, let's do the same for the backbone. Click on the backbone, assign it the skeleton, refresh that upper chest bone, and now just like that, that axe is sitting on his back. It is way too big for him. I'll adjust the pivot so it looks more natural on his back. Just like that-ish. <laughs> He's so tiny. All right, cool. So now the weapon system's good. Let's do the gadget system. His left hand needs to know the skeleton, and it needs to refresh that left hand. And just like that, he is now holding, <laughs> kind of holding a shield. I'll adjust the pivot for the new scale of this character. Uh, just slightly up will do. Yeah, that'll do. God, it's so huge on him. Very funny. In fact, it's so huge, I might actually just adjust the scale real quick of that shield so it looks more natural. There we go. How's that? Looking a little bit more better for our pint size hero? I might do the same real quick to our, uh, to our sword just while I'm at it. In fact, I might even, uh, I might do it also for the, the axe, which I've got mislabeled here as hammer. Let's go ahead and just drop the scale of both of those down a little bit. There, that's looking a little bit better. Uh, that may interfere a little bit with the collision shape objects detection, but uh, it looks better, so we're gonna go for it. Uh, all right, gadget system. Left hand, we already handed the shield. Hip bone, let's give it the skeleton. And I'll tell it the chest again. Cool. And then I'll adjust the pivot so that the gear is closer to his back. And again, I'll adjust the scale of that, uh, that item. Again, it's not great to adjust the scale for items that have collision shapes because it can mess with the detection. So you'd probably want to actually, you know, bring in your own models for items and stuff or just not mess with the scale. It's only because my character is so small that I'm, I'm, I'm meddling with it. Um, there are some other things that, can, uh, that we can reassign the bones for as well, like the, uh, the walking sound effects, uh, the footfall system. They detect when your foot hits the floor and when it comes off the floor just by knowing where your left foot is. Um, and right foot. Um, just to save myself time, I'm just going to delete this. And this kind of shows the feature that this is so modular that we can delete stuff and it's not going to break anything. Uh, but yeah, in theory, our character is ready to go. Should we give it a test? Let's see how it looks with my mini skunk. Oh, hello, little guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're ready to go. Your animations look funny on your tiny little body. I should probably adjust your running speed. All right. Oh, and I didn't adjust the items. Uh, you can see the potion floating in my head. So let's uh, quickly adjust that. I forgot. Uh, item system hand bone. Here's my skeleton. Uh, refresh the left hand. And storage bone. Here's my skeleton. Refresh the spine bone. There. Now his items should be on his hip in theory. can't see him because that shield's in the way. So we'll, uh, we'll move it back here. It's kind of the fun of all this is I can just move stuff around and it'll be just fine. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So now my character should be all right. 
Um, we also found that the walking speed looked a little odd with his uh, with his new body size. So I will change his walk speed down to like 0.7, and maybe his uh, I mean his run speed's probably fine. Probably just that walk. No, it should be. Fine. Where's his run speed? Default speed. That's what I should do. Let's leave that at one. Default speed. We'll change that to three. Here we go. That'll adjust all the speeds all around. Cool, cool, cool. Sprint speeds should be adjusted, but that looks pretty natural now. All the animation's working. Yeah. Oh, he's ready to go. He's going to take this guy on. Ah. targeting system is not there it goes it's like it wasn't detecting it for some reason oh probably because my eye line uh so yeah my different scale changed the eye line pretty significantly so it's impossible that's why i wasn't able to target him so easily the scale is throwing some funny wrenches into the plan but this is a pretty drastic half size character so i'm actually pretty happy with how this is going um how about we uh replace the the enemy character with with a different scale character too. Let's uh let's go ahead and swap out Manny. I'm gonna load up a new blender here. Um, we're going to import those FBXs. Uh, I got them all in here. Um, now I did find that the run and the walking pack that came with this uh, did not have they're, they're root motion based uh, animations. I do not want root motion. So I'm going to I actually downloaded a few other animations, the zombie walk and zombie run. I'm going to use those instead for my uh, for my character to avoid the issue of of root motion making the character walk beyond where his actual collision shape is. All right, so now I've got all these armatures and I've got my base mesh. I need to push all this animation data down into that base mesh's armature. So I'm going to go to animation. Uh, I'll change to the nonlinear editor, and you can see each one of these armatures has animation data in it. I need to push them all down. I'm going to add them all to armature one because that appears to be where my uh, base mesh is. So I'll just push that down, click on the new action here, and hit the next one, push that down, new action, uh, two, push it down, new action, three, push it down, new action, four, push it down, and five, push it down. Uh, I no longer need any of these armatures, I'll get rid of those. And now we should uh, quickly identify what these animations are and name them. So we've got a walk loop. Actually, that's a run. It's a run loop. We've got a walk loop. All right, now we've got everything all uh, all assigned. So we've got his specific animations, and we didn't need to bring these in. I just want him to replace a few in Godot and uh, got them all named. So let's go ahead and export this character out. Um, we're going to go to File, Export, uh, GLB, because I prefer GLB, Exporting Visible Objects. I'll let it generate materials, and I'll only export deformation bones. Let's put that over in next to my skunk. That's where I was putting things before. Let's put it there. All right, now he's here. Uh, we need to remap that bone. Let's see, where is he? OK, good, he's here. Uh, let's remap that skeleton, new bone map, humanoid. And uh, he's missing a few fingers. That is fine, because he only has three fingers. So that should do it. We'll re-import. Um, now Manny has a bunch of extra bones that we don't need, because these physical bones and collision shapes are only for the ragdoll death. So I'm going to turn off ragdoll death, and I will delete this character. Goodbye, Manny. We'll drag in and drop in our new untitled monster. Just like my other character, I'll make them local. Click on this animation player, and let's give them their animations. Load library, melee library. I like to make it unique. OK. And so now, in theory, he should also have all these animations. Oh, good, he does. And they all work. Wonderful. But he also has his own uh, animations that we brought in from Blender. So we've got both libraries running at the same time. It's great. Uh, let's tell the animation tree where that animation player is. 
And now we need to give him his weapons. So equipment system, let's go to his bone, general skeleton, and refresh that right hand and fix the pivot. So just like that, he's got his sword in his hand. And just like the other character, I think I might uh, increase this sword's size so it feels more proportional to this character's body is going to be so unfair for my little skunk. Um, but there we go. So now he's ready to rock and roll. Shall we give it a go? I'm going to delete, again, the footfall sound. We're not going to have footstep sounds for these characters just for now, because I just don't want to show you mapping all that over and over again. Let's go ahead and fire up the game. We should have a skunk, and that should have replaced all of our enemy characters with that guy. So here we go. All right, little skunk. You got it. You got it. Let's open that gate and fight that monster. And you can see he has now inherited all the animations from uh, Manny, the other enemy uh, character. Oh, come on. Let's see if I can get a perfect parry in. Oh, okay, we're going we're gonna to change this now. So he's got the uh, Manny animations. Let's give him his own monster animations, and we'll show you how to adjust things in the, uh, the animation tree. So if I click on this enemy character's animation tree, we've got a few animations in here. Uh, we got his attack animation tree. Let's open that up. It's nested. Um, let's change his slash from the melee library's attack to the attack that came with Mixamo. Um, and maybe I'll change his other attack to like the heavy, the heavy animation instead. Um, also, his movement states. Um, we know that when he dies, let's rename this die. We know that when he dies, uh, he was doing Ragdoll before. He's using a Manny animation now. Let's change it to the death animation we got from Mixamo. And as movement states, we have a walk and a run and an idle. So I'm going to change this guy's movement state here. Um, idle, let's change to the idle that we've downloaded. And his walking forward and his running forward. And then going in the opposite direction, this is just going backwards. Walking backwards for when he's like uh, retreating and running backwards. I don't think he ever does that action, but the code is here for it. So cool we should now see entirely different animations for this bad guy. All the ones that we just brought in from Mixamo. All right, let's take a look. Let's see how that enemy looks, how his animations took over. So there's him doing his new idle animation, yawning and stretching. I'm going to go attack him. Let's see his walk and his new attacking animation. Pretty good. And now we need a check out his uh, death. Ah, come on over here so I can see you. Ah, there we go. This new death animation. Cool, cool, cool. It all works. So there you have it. That's uh, how to replace your character and replace the enemy character in the uh, the template. Uh, we, uh, you notice, you'll notice that we didn't actually have to touch much code either. Like, honestly, a lot of this was able to be done through the GUI, which was the hope. When, other things you may have noticed, all these animations were one-handed. Everything that I had my character do when I made these animations was purposely not two-handed in case the scale was so odd between my character and the uh, initial Y-Bot character. Um, if I had made them two-handed, then it really would have thrown scale off. Things would have gotten really odd, where rather than two hands holding a pole arm or holding a, a sword, your arms might have been crisscrossed or... Uh, or held at weird angles, and it just wouldn't work right. So by making everything one-handed, that means no bows, no staffs, no two-handed swords. Although that limits some of the animations I made for y'all, it also solved the problem of things not lining up proper. So, all right, well, that's that. Thanks, guys.